everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Now, to get the most out of this practice test, I suggest that you do one of the following. One, download the practice problems, complete them, and then watch the video to check your answer. The other option is that you can pause the video to work each problem before revealing the answer. Now, by watching this video, you're definitely increasing your chances of getting a high score on that final exam. Now, I'm going to go through the material quickly but thoroughly, so if you have to rewind and or fast forward for any reason, please feel free to do so. Um, so let's get started. Section 1 includes linear graphs, slopes and rate of change, writing equations, functions, inequalities, and systems of equations. In problem number one, we are asked to use the graph below to find the slope of the line passing through points A and B. The correct answer is C. One method we can use to solve this problem is the slope formula. Recall that if you know any two points on a line, you can plug the points into the slope formula, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So step one is let's identify uh, the two points on the line. So where's point A? If you said negative 2, 3, that is correct. And where's B? that is correct, 1, negative 4. So now we can go ahead and plug these two points into the slope formula. So again, that's y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Notice I color them, the various colors, so that you are able to see um, how they are plugged into the formula. So once we plug them in, it looks like this. On the top, we have the signs are the same. Keep the sign. We want to add the numbers. That's going to give us negative 7. On the bottom, we have a double negative, negative 2, but with a negative in front of it, it becomes plus 2. So that's going to give us 1 plus 2, which, is, which will give us 3. So our slope then is negative 7 over 3, which is the same as negative 7 thirds as our slope. Another method to solve this problem is to use the rise over the run. Now recall the slope of the line is the ratio of the vertical change represented by the rise between the two points and the horizontal change represented by the run. Now when you see rise that means that's a vertical move. Uh, to rise is to go up and to fall is to go down. A run represents a horizontal move. If you run to the positive direction, that produces a positive number. And if you run in the negative direction, uh, that produces a negative number. So it really doesn't matter which point you move from A to B or from B to A. On this particular slide, we're going to uh, move from point B to A. So to move from point B to A, we're going to rise up 7 and run 3 to the left side. So that's going to produce a negative number. So our slope then is 7 over negative 3, which is the same thing as negative 7 thirds. In problem number 2, we were asked to find the midpoint of the line segment with endpoints 2 comma negative 1 and 3 comma 5. Recall the midpoint of a line segment is the point on the segment that is equal distance from its endpoints, in other words, the center point. So what is the correct answer? Yes, choice B is the correct answer. Let's prove that by drawing the line segment to see if indeed uh, 5 halves comma 2 is the center. So here's the line segment. 
let's go ahead and plot that point. So that would be where two and a half and up to. And sure enough, it proves to be the midpoint of the line segment. So here's how we found the midpoint. Simply take the two points that you were given and plug them into the midpoint formula. Recall the midpoint formula is where you're going to add your x's, add your y's, and divide by 2. Again, take your x values, add them together, and divide by 2. Take your y values and combine them together as well, and then divide by 2. So let's look at the points that you were given. Once we plug those points into the formula, it looks like this. So our x values, we have 2 plus 3, which is 5. For our y values, the signs are different, so remember subtract. Take the sign from the larger number, that's going to give you a 4 on top. So what we have is 5 halves comma 4 over 2. The y value can be simplified further to be 4 divided by 2 is simply 2. And that is where our midpoint comes from, 5 halves comma 2. And problem number three, we were asked to determine which equation describes the given graph. So what is the correct answer? Yes, D is the correct answer. First, let's examine the orientation of the line that's graphed. Notice the line rises from left to right, which indicates that it has a positive slope. Now let's use the rise over the run to determine what is the slope. So we're going to go from one point to the other using rise over run. So I'm going to rise up three and then run one to my next point, which tells me that I have a slope of three. Also notice on the, that the line crosses the y-axis at negative six. So it has a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 6. So putting everything together, now you can see why the answer y equals 3x minus 6. Remember, whatever's in front of x is your slope. In the back, you have your y-intercept, which is negative 6. In problem number 4, we were asked to determine which graph describes the equation y equals negative four-thirds x minus one. So what is the correct answer? Choice A. Let's look at the line that we were given. Notice that it has a slope of negative four-thirds. So that means that any line that is not negative, in other words, any line that is the opposite, that has a positive slope, should automatically be eliminated. So if we look at choice B, you'll notice that choice B moves from left to right in an upward motion, which means that we can eliminate that positive slope because it cannot be the answer. Next, let's look at the y-intercept. Notice in the back of the slope, you see a negative 1. That's the y-intercept which means this is the point at which it touches the y-axis. So we're looking for a graph that has a negative slope and touches the y-axis at 0, negative 1. And the only one that does that is A. Now we can check that using the rise over the run. We can move from one point to another so let's do that. I'm going to fall down 4 and run 3. And notice it takes me to my line, which means that it verifies that my slope is negative 4 thirds. Number 5, determine which equation describes the given graph. So what is the correct answer? Choice A. The graph of y equals negative 4 is a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis that passes through the y-axis at negative 4. Number 6. Determine which equation describes the given graph. So what is the correct answer? 
Notice the graph of x equals 2 is a vertical line parallel to the y-axis that passes through the x-axis at 2. Number 7. Determine the slope and y-intercept of the equation 3x minus 6y equals negative 9. So what is the correct answer? Choice A. Notice the given equation is in standard form. So recall that the equation needs to be in slope-intercept form before determining the slope and the y-intercept. So let's start by rewriting the equation in slope-intercept form. So the first step we need to do is to subtract 3x from each side, then divide by negative 6, and y equals 1 half x plus 3 over 2, which confirms the answer choice. Number 8. Write an equation of the line passing through the point negative 3 comma negative 2 with slope 3 fourth. Write your answer in standard form. So what is the correct answer? Choice A. Recall that to write an equation of a line, you will need to know two things. Remember, you need to know the slope and you need to know a point on the line. Now you will also need to use um, a formula to create your line. So recall, you can either use the slope-intercept formula or you can use the point-slope formula. So I'm going to show you the solution to both to accommodate your preference. So on the first one, y equals mx plus b, you're going to remove the y and replace it with negative 2 because that is the y value that you were given. You're going to remove m and replace it with your slope of 3 fourths. You're going to remove x and replace it with the value you're given of negative 3. So when you do that, it looks like this. The next thing you need to do is to combine the right side. So 3 times negative 3 equals negative 9 over 4. Next, you're going to add 9 fourths to each side. And to do that, you're going to have to add unlike fractions, and that will give you 1 fourth. So b equals 1 fourth. So in slope-intercept form, your line would be y equals 3 fourth x plus 1 fourth. Now we will rewrite it in standard form in just a moment. But let's go to those who chose the point-slope formula and see how you were able to plug your points in along with the slope. So recall with this formula uh, that you are only going to plug points into the subpoints formula, not into the x and y that are by themselves. So of the y sub 1, you're going to remove that and replace it with negative 2. Remove m and replace with 3 fourths. Remove x sub 1 and replace with negative 3. So when you do that, it looks like this. Remember, double negatives become positives. Next, on the right side, I'm going to go ahead and do the distributive property, 3 fourths times x, and then 3 fourths times 3. Last step, then, is to subtract 2 from each side. And notice I got the same answer. Uh, when using the slope intercept formula. So now we're going to turn the page and then rewrite this equation in standard form. So here's our equation. So the first thing we need to do to write this in standard form is to subtract 3 fourths x from each side. 
So notice when we do that, we have it in standard form, but the problem here is, is that uh, our x value is negative. And recall that in standard form, uh, this value cannot be negative or a fraction. So what we need to do, we can uh, eliminate both the negative and the fraction uh, by simply multiplying everything by negative uh, 4 so that we can clear the fractions. So when we do that, we see that we wind up with 3x minus 4y equals negative 1. And that is our equation in standard form. Number nine, find the slope intercept form of the equation of the line through the point two comma seven and parallel to the line nine x minus four y equals one. So what is the correct answer? Choice C. So recall that if we want to write a line that is parallel to the one that is given, the first thing we need to do is identify what is the slope of the line that we're given. Recall also that we cannot read it when it is in standard form, so the first thing we need to do is to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So the first thing to do is to subtract 9x from each side. Next, divide by negative 4, and y equals 9 fourth x minus 1 fourth, which means that we have a slope of 9 fourth. So the line that we are to create that's parallel to this given line must also have a slope of 9 fourth, because recall, parallel lines have the same slope. So step two, plug in the same slope and the given point into the slope-intercept formula. So we recall that the slope we were given is 9 fourth. The point we were given is 2 comma 7. And we're going to go ahead and plug that into our slope-intercept form since we're asked to write this equation in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to remove the y and replace it with the y value we were given of 7. I'm going to remove the m and replace it with the given slope of 9 fourths. I'm going to remove the x and replace it with the given value of 2. Now what we don't know is b. So let's do the math and find out what b is. So we're going to solve for b. The first thing we need to do is multiply 9 times 2, which is 18, so we'll have 18 over 4. Next step is to subtract 18 fourths from each side. Once we do that, we have unlike fractions that we need to combine. So notice the LCD here would be 4. So all we need to do is multiply the top and the bottom of this first fraction by 4 so that we can write equivalent fractions that have the same denominator. So now we have 28 over 4 minus 18 over 4, which equals 10 over 4. When we reduce our fraction, we are left with 5 halves. So putting everything together, our line is y equals 9 fourth x plus 5 over 2. And this line is parallel to the line that we were given because, again, parallel lines have the same slope. Number 10, find the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line through the point 2 comma 7 and is perpendicular to the given line 9x minus 4y equals 1. Now this is really just a second part of the previous question. We're using the same line and we're also uh, using the same given point. 
but this time we want to write a line that is perpendicular to the one that is given. So recall from previous problem that the given slope uh, was 9 fourth. So to write a slope that is perpendicular to that, remember perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals, meaning opposite and flipped. So the perpendicular slope then would be a negative and also when you flip the fraction it would be 4 ninths. So negative 4 ninths is our perpendicular slope. So we're going to use the point that we were given and go ahead and plug it in. We're going to remove Y and replace with given value of 7. Remove M and replace with the perpendicular slope of negative 4 ninths. Remove X and replace with given value of 2. So when we do that, remember we want to solve for B. So I have to multiply negative 4 times 2, which is going to give me negative 8 ninths. Next, I need to add 8 ninth to each side. And when I do that, I have to just simply uh, add those two. Since they have the same signs, we can just put them together and uh, rewrite them in improper form. And the way you do that is whole number times the denominator plus the numerator. So that would be 7 times 9 is 63 and 63 plus 8 gives me 71. Keep the denominator of 9. So my line is y equals negative 4 ninth x plus 71 over 9. And that is the line that is perpendicular to the line that is given. Okay, we got 10 problems done. You still with me? All right, let's keep going. If f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1, find f of negative 4. So what is the answer? Choice B. So this function notation here is nothing more than just evaluating function, uh, plugging in some number to see what you get out, input, output sort of thing. So we're given x squared plus 2x plus 1. That means that we're going to remove all the x's and replace them with negative 4 to see what we get out. So just using the uh, order of operation, we're going to start with a negative 4 squared. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Next, we have positive 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. Bringing everything else down, and just moving from left to right, we have 16 minus 8, which equals 8. And then 8 plus 1 gives me 9. So f of negative 4 equals 9. Number 12, which of the following is the graph of a function? So what is the correct answer? Choice B. Recall a graph is a function if it passes the vertical line test. The vertical line state test states that a relation is a function if and only if no vertical line intersects the graph of the relation at more than one point. So it cannot touch in no more than one point. So let's draw a vertical line through these graphs to see how many times uh, that the line intersects the graph. Notice B is the only line that passes the vertical line test. Number 13, identify the domain and range of the following graph. So recall that the domain refers to all of your x values or your input values and your range are your y values or your output values. So when you want to determine the domain, you want to know um, what are all the x values that have a corresponding y value. And when you're asked to find the range, you want to know what are all the y values that have a corresponding x value. 
So to put that in plain English, let's start with the domain. I simply want to know um, how much does this graph extend over uh, the x axis or the x values. So notice here that um, the values uh, along the x axis begin at negative 4 and they extend to uh, infinity, to positive infinity. So our domain then would be from negative 4, including 4, and it extends all the way to positive infinity. Now looking at the range, the range is our y values, and we want to know how much does this graph extends on the y axis. Now the fact that this parabola is on its side and it has arrows on both ends, it basically tells us that for the range, it extends from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Number 14. Given f of x equals 5x minus 4 and g of x equals x squared plus 3, find g minus f of x. So what is the correct answer? choice A. Now be careful here because if you look at this, it the function said to find g minus f of x. So g minus f of x uh, means that we're going to subtract g of x minus f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and place both functions there in that order. There's g of x first, and then you have f of x. Now because we're subtracting, and this second group has a negative in front of it, remember, everyone in that second group must be changed to their opposites. So instead of 5x, it's going to become negative 5x. And, and instead of negative 4, you're going to get positive 4. So once you do that, from there on, it's just simply combining like terms. And the only terms that we have that we can combine that are like each other are the 3 and the 4. So that leaves us with an answer of x squared minus 5x plus 7. Number 15, given f of x equals 5x minus 4 and g of x equals x squared plus 3, find f times g of x. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so we were asked to find f times g of x. And that is found by multiplying f of x times g of x. So let's go ahead and place both functions together so that we can multiply them. And remember, because we have two binomials, we need to use FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. So let's go ahead and begin FOIL. First, that's 5x cubed, outer, plus 15x, inner minus 4x squared last negative 12. Next, we want to see if we can combine anything. So there is nothing more that we can combine. So we can just simply rewrite them in descending order, starting with the highest power down to the lowest power with our constant being last. So we can see here that this is indeed choice B. Number 16, graph the linear inequality. So here we're given a linear inequality. Now the first step we need to do is go ahead and graph the line. So one of the best methods to use when the line is in standard form is to graph using the x and y intercepts. And that's where you're going to let x be 0 and solve for y. 
and then vice versa do the uh, other uh, let y be 0 and solve for x. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to let x be 0. When I let x be 0 and solve for y, I can see that what I have left is negative y equals 3. Remember when your variable is negative that you're solving for, you have to either multiply or divide by negative 1 so that you can make that variable uh, a positive. So your answer winds up being the opposite, so y equals negative 3. So next we're going to leave x alone. This time we're going to let y be 0. So we're going to remove the y and replace it with 0 and do the math and solve for x. So what we have on the left side is 3x and on the right side we have 3. Next step to solving this equation is to divide by 3 and x equals 1. So we have two ordered pairs. Remember, you only need two points to plot a line. So we can go ahead and get ready to uh, draw a line. And what kind of line will we be drawing? Is that a solid line or a dashed line? Well, if you look at the inequality symbol in the original problem, you have a less than symbol, which means that we're going to uh, draw our line using a dashed line. So let's go ahead and get our line. The first point is located at 0 and down 3. The other point over 1 and stay at 0. Line your ruler up and draw your dashed line. Our next step is to decide whether we're going to shade in the left side of that line or whether we're going to shade in the right side of the line. Now there are several methods that you can use to um, determine that I'm going to simply use uh, the method of leaving the equation where it is and use the test point of 0 0 to determine so here's our original equation I'm going to use the test point 0 0 to decide or to determine which side I'm going to shade so remember z point 0 0 is in the center or the origin of our uh, coordinate grid. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug 0 for x and 0 for y into your original formula, uh, original equation. And if you get a true statement, then that means that you would color on the side uh, where that test point is located. And then if you get a false it means that you're going to shade in the opposite side of that test point. So let's go ahead and plug in those test points. So I'm going to remove the x and replace it with 0, remove the y and replace it with 0. Uh, so what I'm left with, you notice that the left side is completely zeroed out. Uh, so what I have is 0 is less than 3. Now that is a true statement, and since that statement is true, that means the area in the, t the test point area, which is the left side, uh, is the side that I would shade, because you are always to shade the true side. So I could go ahead and color that in. Number 17. We're asked to graph these two lines. This is an example of uh, systems of linear inequalities. So you will solve it pretty much the same way you did the previous problem. The only difference is instead of graphing one line, you will graph two lines and then afterwards identify the region where these two lines overlap because that is where your solution lies. So let's go ahead and graph our first line. Now since our line is given to us in slope intercept form, we can graph this line very quickly by using the slope and the y intercept. So we see here we have a slope of 1 half and a y intercept of 0, 3. So let's go ahead and plot that point, 0 and up 3. From that point, I'm going to rise and run to my next point. So that is a rise of 1 and a run of 2. That takes me to my next point. Now I'm ready to line my ruler up and draw a line through those points. Notice that the, the inequality symbol is a 
greater than or equal to symbol, which means that when you see that line underneath there, that you're going to draw a solid line. My next step is to determine whether I am going to shade the top portion of this line or the bottom portion. So I'm go again, I'm going to use my test point 00, zero uh, to see whether I am, which side I'm going to shade. So I can leave the equation just the way it is again and remove the X, remove the Y, replace them with zero. When I do that, what I'm left with is zero is greater than or equal to three. Now that is a false statement because zero is not greater than three and zero is not the same as three. So therefore that is a false statement, which means uh, that side of the uh, test point zero zero, the point of origin, I'm not going to shade that side, but rather the opposite side. All right, so next I want to um, plot the second line. Did you notice that second line is going to pass through the y-axis at 3? So yes, that is a horizontal line. And what type of line am I going to draw? Is that a solid line or a dashed line? That's correct, because when you have the less than or greater than symbol, you're going to use a dashed line to draw your line. So there we have the line. Next I want to determine whether I'm going to shade the top part of the line or the bottom portion of the line. So I'm going to use the test point zero, 00 again. So since I don't have an X, I'm just simply going to remove the Y and replace it with 0 and read the inequality statement. So 0 is less than 3. That is a true statement and since that is a true statement, that means that I will shade the bottom half of that region. So in terms of systems of uh, linear inequalities, what you're looking for is you want to identify uh, the region uh, that overlaps. Okay, so you notice here that this region that overlaps is where your solution is because it is the solution that is common for both inequalities. Number 18, systems of equations solved by substitution or elimination. So what is the correct answer? Choice B, that is correct. All right, so you were asked to solve by substitution or elimination, so I'm going to address both methods to make sure that I cover those students who chose to solve by either method. So let's start with substitution method first. The substitution method, recall, it's about taking one equation and then solve for x or y and then plug that equation into the other equation. In terms of which is easiest, if you look at uh, the equation here, you see um, a variable that's by itself or has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. In this first equation, it's this one. and the second one equation, is this one. Either one um, is easiest to solve for. So in the first equation you would solve for y. If you chose the second equation uh, then you would solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the second equation and solve for x. So the first step to solving for x is I'm going to add 2y to each side. So now that I have what x is I'm going to use that and plug it uh, into the other equation. So again, it's about taking one equation and solve for x or y and then plug it into the other equation. So the first equation, since I haven't used that, I'm going to go ahead and plug uh, this equation into the first equation in place of x. So I'm going to remove the x and replace it with 2y plus 1 because I just solved for x and x is 2y plus 1. And so now that I have my equation, all I need to do is solve for y. So the first thing I need to do is to use the distributive property and multiply 3 times 2y and then 3 times 1. 
Next, I want to combine the left side, 6y minus 1y equals 5y plus 3 on the left side, and then negative 7 on the right side. Next step to solving this is to subtract 3 from each side, divide by 5, and y equals negative 2. So now that I have the value for y, all I need to know is what x is. So to find the value for x, I take the y and plug it into either equation in place of y and solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and it doesn't matter which equation that you choose. You can choose either one. Actually, you've had three equations to work with. Uh, the first, the second one, and then you created a third one. Um, if I want, I can even plug it into the third equation that I created. Remember that equation of x equals 2y plus 1? Let's just use that one. If I remove the y and replace it with negative 2, this is what I get. Now my next step is just simply to combine those terms and I'll know what x is. So on the right side, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 and negative 4 combined with a 1 is negative 3. So my x value is negative 3. I have both my x and y. So my solution to this system of equation is negative 3 comma negative 2. Continuing on with number 18, solving by elimination method, aka addition method. Now they call this the elimination method because in order to solve uh, the system of equations, you're going to have to eliminate either your x variables or eliminate your y variables. And then once you eliminate them, you're going to add the remaining terms. So as far as which one should you eliminate first, well, it's a lot similar to the method that you use to determine uh, the substitution method. Uh, you're looking for variables that uh, are have a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So in the first equation, uh, I can eliminate my y's if I like. It would be easiest to do. Or it would be easiest to eliminate the x's here. Uh, and the reason for that is because when you eliminate them, you are, are looking to multiply um, that one variable with a number that would eliminate the other variable. So what I mean is here I'm going to choose to uh, eliminate uh, the x's. So to eliminate the x's here, if I have 3x here, then this needs to be the opposite of 3x. It needs to be negative 3x. And the way I can make this negative 3x is by simply multiplying it by negative 3. But you know the rules of equations. What you do to one, you have to do to every one in that equation. So I have to multiply all terms by negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And once I multiply all three terms by negative 3 using the distributive property, I'm left with a new equation. And you'll notice here that my x's uh, canceled out. They were eliminated. So when I combine the remaining terms or add the remaining terms, I draw a line and add the remaining terms, what I'm left with is 5y equals negative 10. Next step to solving this is to divide by 5 and y equals negative 2. Now the same as the, with the other method, once you find one variable, all you have to do is plug it back into either equation to find your second variable or your second number. So we're going to plug y into either one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one that you plug it into. So again, we can plug it into um, our equation. Uh, we, can play, we can plug it in number 2. So let's plug it in number 2. We're going to remove the y and replace it with negative 2. When we do that and do the math, we see here negative 2 times negative 2 equals positive 4. Last step to solving for x is to subtract 4 from each side and x equals negative 3. So we see here using the addition or aka elimination method, uh, we still have the same answer of negative 3 comma negative 2. Number 19. A total of $3,000 is invested 
part at 2% simple interest and part at 4%. If the total interest from the two investments is $100, how much is invested at each rate? Okay, so we can use the systems of equation to solve this particular uh, word problem. The first thing we need to do is assign variables. So since we have two different uh, investments, one at 2% and one at 4%, uh, we need two different variables. So let's let X be um, the investment into the 2% account, and let's let Y be uh, the investment uh, in the four, at 4%. Now, the next thing we want to do is set up our uh, equations. The first equation, remember, uh, should involve um, what was invested, the total amount that was invested. Uh, your next equation, your second equation, should deal with uh, the interest that, were, that was involved in these accounts. Uh, so let's start with the first equation. Uh, we don't know what was invested into uh, the two percent we don't know the amount also that was invested at four percent so uh, that's why we're using the variables uh, but we do know that there was a total of three thousand uh, dollars that was invested in fact that's the very first part of the sentence so there's our first equation um, is the amount of dollars invested so what we have is x plus y equals three thousand again we don't know what was invested into the two percent we don't know what was invested at 4%, but we do know there was a total of 3,000 invested. Our second account uh, uh, equation rather uh, deals with uh, the interest. So uh, we know that the, with the first account, uh, it was invested at a 2% interest. Uh, the second account was invested at 4% interest. And we know that between the two of them, uh, it yielded a hundred dollars so um, that's our second equation so we're going to go ahead instead of writing it as a percent we're going to write it as a decimal so there's our second equation all right and if you're wondering how we turn these uh, percents into a decimal remember you just simply move the decimal places two places to the left and insert the decimal symbol um, however, we do still have our equation in two different units here. We have whole numbers and then we have decimals. Um, it would be easiest to solve this equation if they both were whole numbers. So what we can do with equation number uh, two is we can simply multiply all the three, these three terms. We can multiply them by 100 to clear um, these decimals. Uh, one other way is to simply just uh, do it manually and and move all three uh, numbers two places to the right uh, and then we can get rid of the decimals so once we clear the decimals this is the equation we're left with 2x plus 4y uh, equals 10,000 so now we have our two equations and we can proceed with using either the substitution method or the elimination method. All right. So now that we have um, our equations, we can eliminate one of the variables. So let's eliminate x. And to lim eliminate x, all we need to do is just simply multiply the top equation by negative 2. So when we do that, uh, the first equation uh, will change we did not do anything to our second equation we leave that alone so now I can go ahead and proceed with draw the line and do my addition so what I'm left with is 2y equals 4,000 last step to solving this is to divide by 2 and y equals 2,000 so remember the y value relates to the 4% account so that means that 2,000 was invested into the 4% account now in terms of wondering how do I find what was invested into the 2% account well you can use mental math to do that because if there was a total of three thousand dollars invested in all and you you invested two thousand of that into the four percent account that means the remaining a thousand was invested into the two percent account but if you're not able to readily uh, figure that out 
remember you all you have to do is take this y value and plug it into either equation and then you'll be able to find your x value so let's go ahead and do that okay so it looks like uh, our value of y would be easiest to plug into equation number one so let's plug it into equation number one so we can find out what x is when we do that it looks like this last step to solving for x is to subtract 2000 from each side and x equals 1000 so as you can see uh, 1000 was invested at the 2% interest and 2000 was invested at 4% we can check our solution by simply plugging those values back into the original equation and you can see that it does check out uh, that this is indeed our solution to uh, this problem. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching Math on PowerPoint Tutorials. If you like this video and found it to be helpful in any way, please like it and subscribe to my channel.